Hello, good evening. Good evening, everybody. How are you all doing? I am just uh, going to have a look and make sure that we are all live everywhere. But yeah, other than that, welcome to the live stream. Welcome to mid month um, inspirational live stream for our January challenge, uh, Magical January. So, my name is Aveta. I am the representative, design team, um, coordinator here at Decovash Queen. So <laughs> I hope that um, you're going to have a great time with me tonight. Here in this live stream, we're going to be decoupaging a um, fairy door. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about it in just a second. Okay. Um, hello, Teresa. Hello, Shelly. How are you? How are you both doing? Okay. I hope that everybody can see me everywhere. If not, then please shout and scream. And if you can't, like, you know, wave your hands at me and all of that. Ah, oh, thank you, Shelly. <laughs> okay. So, um, this little door, this little fairy door, I bought this from the works here in UK, um, which is like a, um, one of those random shops that sells like discount books and board games and stationery and some craft supplies and that kind of stuff. So, um, hello, Sabine from Denmark. How are you? Lovely to see you. So, fairy door, I spotted it when I was in the shop um last time and i thought you know what this is going to be perfect for my um inspirational stream um so i have a few plans today i already picked out some papers so this is going to be one of the papers that we're going to put on so this is going to go on the front of the door um this is christmas snowflakes um paper from deck flash queen but um to be honest, it's not very Christmassy. Yes, it has snowflakes on it, it has some sparkles on it, but um, it doesn't scream Christmas to me. It's more winter. Um, it's very, very subtle. And then on the inside, I prepped, um, this is a piece of uh, medium weight chipboard. So I cut it out to put it on the back. And on the inside, we're going to um, glue in one of the fairies. So this is Fairy Queen from the paper is, and this is my leftovers of Fairy 4-pack. As you can see, I cut her out um, already, but there was originally four fairies in this paper. Um, this is Fairy 4-pack. Um, and so, and these are going to sit, oh, hang on. So she's going to sit here and then this is going to sit at the back and so the idea is so that when you open the door um, you get into the magical world of fairies. So that is kind of the, the idea behind it. So without any further ado, if everybody's happy, if you can all see me and hear me very well and you're all happy with uh, being here, I'm happy to see you, that's for sure. Um, I'm going to switch the camera over and put the lights on and do all of that stuff so um, so that we can get started and um, we can have some fun with this tonight. So, let me turn this up. So, this is our first paper that we're going to be um, using for... The door itself of course before we get started with any kind of decoupage here on the front we do need to remove these hinges and the clasp now i don't know if this is going to be staying or going um the clasp i also prepped some mold here so we're going to be applying some more molds i have some redesign mold i have these um wings this is a zuri mold um, then I have a locket. This is from Lady Vagabond Lifestyle mold, I think. And then we also have one of these um, keys from um, also redesign mold that I thought would um, go very well with the whole composition. But we'll see kind of how we get on with this whole thing. So first I need to grab a little screwdriver and we need to remove 
the hardware so that we can start painting and um, decoupaging because um, since they are removable we definitely want to make our life easier by taking off the hardware and you know just decoupaging on a flat surface rather than trying to decoupage around it um oh i can't see who commented i'm gonna have to watch you later unfortunately for him here on Streamyard, if you don't allow um you have to like go on Streamyard thing and say that you allow them to um share your username and stuff like that so some people come up just as facebook user to me um hello penny thank you yes the paper is really beautiful um, somebody else from Denmark. Hello, Claire. Hello, Maya from Slovenia. Hello. Uh, Joy from Calgary in Canada. Hello from Rotterdam. Carla. Hello. Hello, Eileen. Okay. Oh, my goodness. A lot of people. I'm so happy to see you all here. And I hope that this is going to be an enjoyable uh, little project for all of you to watch and i'm hoping that this might inspire um you to enter into our january challenge which of course is magical january um so you can interpret it in whichever way you want so we've already seen quite a few entries with the bluebird queen um paper um and i think uh you know i was looking at some today and i was thinking i think the bluebird queen uh paper really has that like it has something magical um like a really magical vibe to it i don't know um same we've also seen some inspiration with the storybook rice paper which of course has like a, a horse and very like medieval fairy tale um uh, theme to it so um but really as you can see, I'm just using, I'm going to be using a Christmas paper and a fairy paper. So they're not like that, um, um, you know, specifically like our oh, fairy tale themed necessarily. Hello from MA. I'm, is that Michigan? I'm very, very bad with it. <laughs> with the US uh, state abbreviation so um, I am very sorry if I just offended somebody and got that wrong I didn't mean to hello Anna from Romania very good to see you how are you oh my goodness okay Massachusetts okay there we go I learned something uh, new today Thank you for educating me so it would have been very nice if I could remove this base from this thing because of course it is like um sticking out from both ends so this thing does not want to lay flat but we'll just have to deal with it um as is i'm gonna grab a little bit of sandpaper and just run it over these um holes here from the um, hinges and everything just in case if we decide not to put anything back on here I don't want any pieces of wood sticking out there so we've sanded this down a little bit next thing that we're gonna need to do is we need to prime our surface we need to um, paint it white so obviously rice paper as you can see is very very see-through um so especially when you apply glue onto it it becomes even more see-through um so what happens is that if you place it over a light colored surface the colors actually show up um very nicely right they show up very bright and they pop but then as you can see like you can see how see-through it is because you can see um my background there coming through you can see the darker lines of the gray in the bricks in my paper underneath um showing through and the colors get all muddled up so that's why it's very very important to always paint your surface um a light color unless it's already white um in which case you can 
skip that part, though I would still always advise um, priming it with something, even if it's just transparent. Um, yeah, so paint the surface white so that your um, colors show true as they should be. <laughs> hello, hello. Okay, I'm going to try and uh, find if I can see who is commenting. Unfortunately, I don't know if I can. Decoupage Queen is live. Okay, no, I won't be able to see the names of some people, so I do apologize. But I'm, I'm able to see all of the comments. I'm not able to see all of the names of everybody that is commenting, unfortunately. So we'll just have to deal with it. So um, have any of you already entered the challenge? Those of you that um, are watching today, have you entered the challenge or will you be entering the challenge? Um, are you thinking about it? If you are thinking about it, what's stopping you? Do you have any like hesitations? Do you have any questions that you want to ask about it? Because um, I am here to answer them all, or at least to try and answer them all. Um, okay. Let's paint this door white as well. This is gonna be interesting. I don't know how um, well the rice paper is going to go into these little um, crevices because the rice paper is a little bit thicker than like napkin for example which I think was the last thing that I decoupaged onto some wood with like crevices I think it was napkin that I decoupaged so um, we'll see how this goes and we'll see kind of how we um, we're going to have to find a way around you know dealing with these crevices, whether it be um, cutting the paper and then gluing it into the grooves, um, but yeah, we will see how we kind of go around this issue, this little issue that we have here on this cute fairy door. To be fair, like these fairy doors um, have been available at um, the works here. Um, ever since I don't know they're, they're always there like that's one of the things that I think they always have in stock or at least have done for a very long time now so I'm gonna have to quickly dry this with my um, heat gun so I can do another coat um, and what was I saying? Yeah, so I've, I've seen this fairy door many, many times and I've always kind of avoided it and never picked it up because I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't really know where to take it. It doesn't immediately come to me as to like what to do with it. What should I, um, how do you decorate it? How do you go around it? And then this time, because I knew that I'm going to have this live stream coming up, um, and I was in that shop and I saw it and I was like, you know what, um, I'm going to grab it because uh, Magical January like is as good as it gets for like a fitting theme to make a fairy door. So if I don't do it now, then, you know, I've probably missed the only chance that I had to use it. <laughs> Shelly says I will be entering. I'm doing a spellbook inspired make. Ooh, that is so interesting. I can't wait to see it. Make sure that you put it into the group and then um, hashtag Magical January as well because that will then make it easier for us to find it um, at the end of the month. Hello, Anita from the Netherlands. And it is the gesso primer or acrylic paint. This is white gesso from Finnebar. Uh There it is. That's what it looks like. White gesso, so let me just do another coat here and then we can go ahead and move on to our decoupage. So the, um, you can really use anything for this, um, white acrylic paint, white gesso, white chalk paint. If anything, like chalk paint is always a really good, um, 
thing to use for this because um, chalk paint tends to be um, a little bit more opaque it has better coverage so you will probably get away with just one coat um, of it and then you won't have to you know makes it a little bit easier makes it a little bit quicker as well oh joe says i have to watch on catch up that's okay that's okay the catch up will be here replay for any of you that are um tuning in and maybe you don't have time to like watch this um later on just um you will be able to find the replay of this live stream over on decoupage queen uh, page over on decoupage queen youtube and over in decoupage queens and kings um, group here on facebook as well so if you want to then come back to this even if you watch for the rest of the um, live stream, if there's something that you then like, oh, you know what, there was something that I wanted to come back to, then at least you know where to find the replay. Um, oh, well, thanks, Anita. Yes, uh, by the way, if you uh, know anybody or if you, if you know of a group, a place, a page, where this challenge and this live stream would be appropriate to share to. Um, so obviously, I don't want you to break any other page or um, group rules. Um, but if you think that this is perfect for, I don't know, a decoupage related group somewhere, and they are allowed to share live streams, then uh, please do, because the more people know about um, this challenge the more fun we can have and uh, the more people um, will get to maybe um, watch and see how to use rice papers in their work and you know what rice papers are some of the best papers that you can use for decoupage because they they make life so much easier compared to uh napkins you know when i first started um kind of napkins were like the the whole thing um rice papers were not that easily available um so trying to figure out how to use napkins and how to get them to not wrinkle and um then there's also of course the whole thing with if you buy napkins or books or if you're using like magazine cutouts and or printouts your own printout there's always that a little um issue of like um copyright in case if you was gonna like then sell it or gift it to somebody or do anything with your work um that's something that you need to um keep in mind however of course when it's rice paper, most of the time it is specifically made for decoupage and most companies, um, as far as I know, and I know definitely the decoupage queen, of course, allows you to sell your work using decoupage queen papers. So um, that's like one of those things that you don't need to think about. And I'm, maybe to some people it may not be like that big of a deal, but I know when I first started with decoupage, um, just like I think uh, most crafters, um, I was like, well, okay, this is great. I'm making a lot of things. What am I going to do with it? <laughs> I can't store it all. So like I, I need to, I need to um, do something with it. I need to like sell it to somebody or gift it to somebody or do something with it. And of course, if you're talking about selling, then you do need to keep in mind things like copyrights and stuff like that. Okay. So as we were applying our gesso and all of that, we have a little bit of um, wood fibers lifting up here in a few places. So again, I just take a little bit of sandpaper and I just clean it up to make sure that we have some nice, good quality um fairy door so that our little fairies that are going to be entering through this door don't get no splinters in their tiny little wings 
popping in to say hi on lunch break at work. Oh no, Evelyn, good to see you here. And of course, you can watch us in replay later on. But um, while you're here, I hope that you're still here. I hope that the rest of your day at work goes really, really well. And um, you have a you have a nice um, what is it afternoon for you now, right? I'm very bad with time zones, so like, please don't hold it against me if I get um, time zones a little bit wrong. So now that we've sanded this down a little bit, I'm going to, I'm just wiping it down a little bit to clean up some of this dust before we go ahead and we decoupage. Um, hello, Iris, how are you? Hello, Sarah, how are you? Okay, so let's decoupage some rice paper on here. So instantly you can see, right? I place the, I hope that you can see. I place the rice paper over the top here, over the frame, right? And you can instantly see the white outline of the frame and how it makes the paper and the um, pattern on the paper pop, right? So that's something that you always must um, do. Always paint it white. Okay, hang on a second. My cat is um, trying to get my attention over here. So I don't know what he wants. Probably to go out. So I'm going to let him out before he's crouching my chair to shreds. And down back, standard. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever done a live stream where I have <laughs> had to take a little break to <laughs> to attend to my cat. Um, okay, I know I've done it to myself. Um, right, wait. I need to find the um, right side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just dipping my brush into. This is a clean brush. I dip it into water, I run it over this white outline, right? Because we need to get to that um, printed part here. And then just using my nail, I pull away the excess fibers. Because we want to be able to sort of place this paper on here and then um, so that like the pattern goes all the way to the bottom of the frame. So next we just need first always make sure that your door is aligned, right? Oh, I just caught my camera with my hair. I do apologize. So I'm trying to place the door there and then we need some decoupage glue. Snowflake paper is such a versatile all-around paper. Exactly. It definitely is. It's definitely a... Um, out of, I think out of all of the papers that we have, this is the most, like, um, wintry, without it being Christmassy. It's the most wintry. So, I align where I want my paper to be. I'm kind of going to pop into the frame a little bit here. I want some of this snowflake to be on the um, kind of on the big part here. So I line it up and I press it down and then I'm going to peel back the paper a little bit. Hold it down and then I'm going to apply decoupage glue onto the top part. I'm going to have to stand up for this because I can't see what I'm doing. So I apply decoupage glue, then I take my little cloth and I lay the paper down. I lay the paper down onto the glue and then I'm going to peel it back from this side and I'm going to, oh, okay, let's align this first. 
This is going to be an interesting part. Because that door is really, really wobbly. So I'm trying to kind of get all of the bits at the same time. I could have just cut it out, but you know what? I am that level of lazy that I'm I'm gonna try and get it all done at the same time. And press it all down. And then, you know what, we need to cut this. So I'll take my box cutter knife and I'm going in around. This will have to do. I'll cut it here. I am completely winging this. I don't know if you can tell, but I absolutely am completely winging this. But as you can see, it's working out. It's working out okay-ish. So, and then we just take this part out and we can focus on it one part at a time, right? So we'll finish gluing down this side. Push the paper back. Do the other part of the arch. So I'm kind of peeling it back to see how far back I need to put the glue on. Now I'm using the cloth to bring the paper down onto the surface because cloth tends to be a little bit softer and like you're not risking leaving any fingerprints on it. Okay, so the arch is down. Now we need to do the door. Kim, thank you very much for the share. And now we can get the door sorted. So this way our image is going to be consistent. Okay. So I think with the whole paper situation here, I am going to take my knife and I'm going to go into the groves before I apply the glue onto, onto the top of it. And I'm gonna run my knife. Could have done with a sharper blade here. And I'm gonna run my blade across these lines. And I'm doing it before I apply the glue on so that when I go over the top to kind of seal it all, um, then the glue should also help stick all of these um, little bits of like cut off paper right that is in the growth inside of it if that makes sense i don't know how far we're gonna get with this tonight because obviously the mold and everything is gonna have to dry and i do want to varnish all of this as well so We'll see how we get on tonight. So what is everybody else doing at the moment? Are you all just kind of watching and enjoying? I know Evelyn is on her break at work, but um, is anybody else kind of working alongside with me? If you are, then tell me what you're working on. What are you making tonight? And if you are not making anything right now, do you have any plans to make anything anytime soon? Okay, so we've done the growths. I'm going to go over the whole thing. See this little bit of paper here that I can see is starting to peel back. So I just peel it back and I add a little bit of glue. That's not nothing too 
kind of be scared of. Things like that will happen. And now we can go over it and glue over the top of it all. Working we on the Circus Girls project. Eee! Nancy, I can't wait to see it. I love the Circus Girls. I love them so much. I have one of those big Circus Girl papers, so I need to do something with it. I have a big panel in mind. I want to put them on the panel and then um, can display them uh, maybe in my bedroom. I have a nice big uh, piece of wall in my bedroom that kind of desperately needs something. <laughs> so I'm thinking um, abstract gears or circus girls. I think circus girls because um, I do like circus. <laughs> well, they are called the better circus girls for a reason. Catch you later in replay. See you soon, Evelyn. Hope your day goes well. Okay, so I'm going to now go back to the arch and we're gonna apply another coat of glue over here i'm kind of running low on my decoupage glue now might have to switch to good old mod podge soon which by the way in case if you are new starting out in decoupage um decoupage as far as decoupage glues go you can buy special decoupage glues. They are nice because they tend to be the right consistency and um, they are kind of made for this. So they're not going to yellow over time and all of that. But if you're just starting out, Mod Podge or um, even just normal PVA glue um, is going to do just fine. You know what? I do need to plug my phone in because um, it's saying that it's running low on battery and I don't want to lose you at all. Uh, midway through the stream. Working on the side table that, oh, the one everybody voted I should do an A2 French floral. Yes, I can't wait to see that table. It's going to be such a cool project once you're finished with it. Okay, so we're going to set this to the side for now. Um, and we're going to focus on this piece now. So this, of course, is a little fairy that is going to sit inside of the door for when we open the door. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to bring this back. So this is just a piece of chipboard, medium weight chipboard, and I painted it white on one side. So I am going to sit it on the back here. And I'm going to lay it down. flat so that you know it's there as if I'm as if I've already glued it down this is proven to be a little bit trickier than uh, you know thinking through your project is not my strong point unless I've already um, done the project before uh, then I'm fine but um, other than that, yeah, it's not not one of my strengths, not necessarily. So sometimes I have to improvise. So I just made a marking for like where our door's door opening is. So that I don't glue her here. And then you open the door and all you see is a leg. Um, okay. I think I've cut her off a little bit too short, you know. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's all fine. It's all good. We'll get there. First time using them, I feel like it's my New Year's resolution. Use papers I've never used before. That is a really good resolution. You know what? I haven't used Christmas snowflakes before. Christmas snowflakes, um, this is this is my first one. Okay. All right, let's lay this down where we want it to be i think i'm gonna try and aim it for the top part and then leave that cut off bit here at the end um and then we can paint it or something to match so i'm just applying 
Те копаєш, коли вухіє. And then we're gonna lay our fairy down. See, so the beauty of rice paper is the fact that you can just, it is that simple. You just put glue on and then um, you just lay it down. The hardest part is just getting it into the place where you want it to be, right? Like centering it. As long as you can do that, then um, everything else is a piece of cake. Because, again, any other paper that you take, whether it be a napkin, uh, printed paper, scrapbook paper, um, magazine cutout, anything like that, as soon as you apply a water-based glue onto it or underneath it, uh, the water content inside of your glue is going to start... Um, bubbling the whole thing up i hope that my phone is charging i think it is okay right so let's apply some glue over the top now to seal it all and then if you're gonna see some ink run off onto the side it's because i used a pen to mark where I needed to cut my paper. That is something, um, again, one of those things that I would always advise to use a pencil, but in the moment when I was doing it, I could not find my pencil. So, pen it was. Um, working on a frame, uh, Jay says, working on a frame and a book cover, I always work on a few things at the same time to allow for drying time. Yes, uh, that is a really, really good strategy. It's always best. I think I've, I now find that um, as I've started doing more mixed media um, type of stuff, I now find that um, I need to work on less projects at the same time because I'm kind of able to work on the same project for a long time but if you're doing more kind of things that are closer to your traditional decoupage then yes absolutely you definitely need to be doing several projects at the same time otherwise you lose momentum like I found that um, if I don't do several decoupage projects at the same time I lose momentum and then I don't want to do anything at all for a long time um, or I will um, procrastinate and specifically put off um, doing anything because, oh, I know that, uh, you know, I'm going to sit down at my desk, I'm going to apply a coat of paint, and then I've got three hours drying time. So what's the point? <laughs> um, but, yeah, that is... Sherry, you made it! That's okay. You can watch the beginning. Um in the replay later on. Teresa says Christmas Snowflakes is an oldie now. It definitely is. Christmas Snowflake is a classic at this point. I think it's been used so many times on um, so many projects now that like, I don't know. But I still find that finding new ways of like, you know, utilizing them as like an icy fairy door <laughs> maybe like that was my idea that this could be a um icy fairy door okay so now that it's all dry we can set this to the side because this doesn't need any um additional work to it so this is how it's gonna sit right inside and then you open it and da -da -da, there she is inside so um she doesn't need any sanding however the um door and the arch we need to get rid of the excess paper This is a, just a nail file that I have here. These are so handy. I don't know if I'll ever go back to just using sandpaper to sand off um, excess napkins or white papers. Because I always end up 
with like p random pieces of um, sandpaper all over the place and they wear down I find a lot quicker as well than um, a nail file and a nail file is just so much more ergonomic in your hand it's so much easier to hold so again one of those things and that's all thanks to um, again a dear friend <laughs> of mine <laughs> um, that sent me some uh, nail files because I kept saying oh my god I, I really should I really should go and get some nail files but you know I am one of those people that, that oh, I, I know I should and then when I'm in the shop I never think to actually do it so she finally sent me some and I will never go back so I'm very 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 grateful so let's sand down this arch and the door and then we can move on to the next few steps we have a little bit of excess here on the edge which i'm going to try and get to go around the outs um, outside the inside as well just like this and I think as soon as you clean off the edges, that's when you can really, you really start to see, um, like the idea and the beauty of using um, these kind of patterned papers to beautify your project. Um, also, I wanted to mention while I have you all here that. Um, in decoupage queen we um at the moment we have a design team call going um which i know we've shared several times and all of that um this information can be found on decoupage queen blog um the call is open up until the 20th of january um midnight time so get your applications in if you think that you would like to have a go and um, give it a try and you think that you may have something to offer to the team and um, you are willing and you're daring um, to, to, you know, give it a try, then send us an application. All of the information can be found on uh, the blog on decoupagequeen.com website. Um, on how to apply, what information to send in and all of that kind of stuff because we are really, really open to uh, finding new people, new talents. We would love to see some, um, some amazing new artists join our team. So that's kind of um, that out of the way. That is sanded. Look at that beautiful arch. Isn't this paper perfect? Like now that it's um, glued on onto the white um, wood, you can actually see the pattern um, show through really nicely, right? Like because when I when I hold it like this, it doesn't really show up as well, right? All of the colors get a little bit muddled up because it's see through, so you can still see like the lines of my table and my hands and all of that. But then when it's on the white background, it's so beautiful. It is so gorgeous. And then we just need to go around the edges here. On the door and then what are we going to do next? We need to um, go around this bottom edge. We're probably just going to go around it with a little bit of black paint um, to kind of fade it in from the bottom. I think I am going to have to switch over to my high grit sandpaper here on this one. I think a lot of the fibers, when I cut them, a lot of the fibers kind of spread out and they glued down to the actual wood. Um, they're not like hanging in the air as much. <laughs> They're really glued down to the side. So we need something a little bit more heavy duty here. Okay. 
and the door looks really really nice and then we can um show off the beautiful edges um of the door all of the like outside parts and then we can also go in these groves with a little bit of dark wax and it's going to just make it all really really pop any very beautiful thing Excess paper removed. Let's pick up the dirt real quick. Right. So this is kind of the idea of the door. I think it looks so cool with this paper. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so glad that I <laughs> used this particular paper. Right, so I'm going to take a little bit of just black gesso. Is it still sealed? No. Okay, I have opened it before. <laughs> the seal came back. And I'm going to take a little um, sponge dabber, right? A little sponge on a stick and I'm gonna go over the bottom with my sponge stick just like this to add that missing edge that I mistakenly cut off a little bit too short so this is just gonna help us mask it off a little bit Okay, and the next step, let's get this dry, I know, not very interesting, <laughs> but here we are, decoupage does tend to have a lot of um, drying and varnishing and gluing and varnishing and drying and painting and all of that, it's very um, multi-layered process very multi-layered okay next a little bit of matte varnish so I um, use heavy duty wood varnish from polyvine this is my um, all-time favorite it's now been several years that I've not used anything but um, polyvine matte varnish as far as matte varnishes go uh, because it is very matte and it hides a lot of the um, like glue strokes from your brush and all of that kind of stuff all of these little um, imperfections that you may say um, it really helps to bring it all a little bit together and make it all look a little bit more professional. I don't know if, um, yeah, the, I don't think the camera is gonna show it as well, but um, I can really see like the decoupage glue that I used, it's not very matte, it's more like satin finish. So when I shine it in the light, there a little bit you can see it glaring back at me but like in real life um looking with my own eyes i can also see some of the brush strokes that i left with um when i when i glued it down so i just go over the whole thing with a little bit of polyvine and this is this stuff is very matte, so it makes the whole thing look a lot more presentable. And also, another, of course, bonus of as far as varnishes go is that it offers you a bit more protection. Ideally, you want to be, if you want, you know, proper perfect, uh, blah, protection on your piece, ideally, you want to be using um, three or more coats of varnish. 
but in this instance it's more for the visual effect that it offers rather than anything else hello miriam so ladies cooking stuffed cabbage rolls oh my god that sounds delicious i love stuffed cabbage rolls haven't had them in a very long time i think since my mom cooked them <laughs> Fold your paper into thirds, just so I'm not so hard on your hands. Oh, that's a good idea. I'll have to try that. So, um, yeah, I'm just drying it off and I don't know, again, how well you can see. So here you can still see a little bit of wet um, varnish, but as I'm drying it, it becomes completely matte. You can't see any light glaring off of it. And that is why I um, love using this stuff over the top of my decoupage pieces. Because, um, of course, if you're decoupaging anything, you're going to be using glue. And glue does not usually have the best um, properties, right? It's, it's good for gluing things down. It's not great for protecting things. And it's not great for, um, for the visuals. <laughs> so varnish is all dry we can add this in so what glue do we use i'm just gonna use some uh, you know what i really have been enjoying using um this is 3d matte gel from finnabar i have been using this for um gluing things down um that are not necessarily like very heavy or um bulky like things that i would typically use heavy body gel for um so in this instance i don't need heavy body gel because it's not that heavy um but 3d gel works great and it's a little bit easier to apply to I might just need to go over it another time on the other side because this stuff is a little bit warm still from me drying it so obviously the glue starts drying out faster okay so the glue is on so now i just need to flip it onto the back and then we adjust it where it's supposed to go so the fairy is in I love stuffed cabbage rolls too stuffed cabbage rolls are, are, are the bomb definitely <laughs> and then so obviously we're going to need to um, attach the door but i think i'm going to be attaching the door later on once everything is finished right once i've added all of the um once i've painted everything um all of that kind of stuff i think that's when we're gonna do it so next up we need to um decorate our um edges somehow so i brought out this is a redesign with Prima mold, a very pretty mold, has some really nice elements in it. And I just have some Daz clay, so I'm gonna make a few make a few of these borders. I really like this one um, with the little vines. Again, I think that it is um, perfect for this kind of project uh, where you know talking about kind of more magical enchanted things so of course um something like this with a border with like vines going on it is going to be perfect for creating an even more enchanted look so let's take our clay out 
And let's see if this is going to be enough to cover one side. Not quite, okay. But we can, I think we can make it work. So I'll make two of these and we'll attach them on and then we'll see where we stand with our butterfly wings as well because we're going to have to put them on as well. Um, will you attach door with hinges? Yes, I'm going to be using hinges. I don't know if I'm going to use the same hinges um, that were on here. Uh, I might have a look and see if I have anything a little bit prettier um, in my stash. But um, yeah, I'll use hinges to attach the door so that you can still see it. Um, you can see the um, inside you open the door and then there's the fairy, right? Um, but then I don't know if I'll be using that latch um, because I don't really like the look of it. I would rather um, use this little um, lock here, padlock that we have. This is from Lady Vagabond, I think. Um, and then just kind of attach it on here halfway, right? Something along those lines. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll, we could create a little doorknob with clay so that you can take open it a little bit easier and then attach the padlock kind of onto it. I don't know yet. I think this part is going to have to be left, uh, like I'm going to leave it until the very last minute. I don't know. Oh, no. Okay. Forget all of that. <laughs> I just realized um, that, you know what, I have some Finnegar Mechanicals that I'm going be perfect for this. These little things, these little knobs here like this one here look at it ah oh, it's gonna be so cute right and then we can paint it in whichever color that we want and you can um, once you've glued it on um, with like heavy body gel or something like that you, can, you will be able to actually use it as a doorknob oh my god yes that is yes this is gonna be perfect let me just pop these back in um right back to the clay but then i'll figure out if i i'll have to figure out whether to use this or not um later on i think once i've added the um what do you call it it's a little knob to open the door with Right, let's pop these little clay vines on. So I'm just again using that 3D matte gel. And then I attach the vine onto the side because we want to try and beautify it a little bit because obviously we just attached um, that um, chipboard onto it as well so if you paint it it's going to be very visible so we want to try and hide it even if it's just a little bit make it a little bit more interesting here on these sides That is a perfect one of <laughs> I know. <laughs> I think you heard me. Ex <laughs> My excitement when I remembered that I have those. <laughs> I think they are, they are really, really uh, like perfect for something like this. Right, there we go. See how that's going to, um, the vines go over it really nicely. And then, of course, depending on how difficult you would like to make something like this. Um, 
you can uh, paint it in different colors, right? And make your vines green and uh, or like a completely different color, like gold or something. Um, gold would look really, really nice. But I think with with um, like painting side of things, I think I'm going to try and stick to more of these kind of blue tones of the arch itself and paint all of the like moldings and everything that I'm going to add in... Um, in these kind of tones so that they blend in a little bit more and then make the whole thing a little bit more cohesive and um, a little bit more put together. Another one of my favorites, which isn't really can't wait to see it. <laughs> Eating the cabbage rolls is yummy but cooking it, I'm not a fan of the smell. Yeah, nothing like a little bit of cabbage smell. <laughs> And you're walking around the house and you're wondering, hmm, <laughs> is that my cooking or is that somebody's uh, backside? Okay. Um, Amber, hello. I can't remember if I said hello to you already or not. Um, uh, just using this mold for our class project. It's a beauty. Oh, you decided to go for this one. That is... So um, it's going to look really nice. It's it's a really, really good mold. It's a good alternative to what we used. Okay. <laughs> I'm in a little bit of a hyper mood today. Um, it's been a long day. <laughs> so I'm kind of... I think I've had... I tapped into my um, excess... Um, energy reservoir so <laughs> i'm a little bit like uh, giddy at the moment uh right so we applied some of the borders now the wings are gonna go on a little bit like so right the idea is that i want them to um hang on and i'm gonna I want the bottom parts of the um, of the wings. I don't want them touching um, the part, obviously, where the door is going to open. So we need to make sure that then they're hanging higher than um, than the door itself, the door opening. And then the key is going to go kind of in the middle, and that's going to be um, like the body of the of the butterfly, right? something like that so okay i just measured that um put that up here so that i can see if i need to add any more of these um clay vines and i don't think that we need them so i'm gonna prop this up like this onto my heavy body gel jar and we're gonna take this mold now this is uh, baroque swirls also from redesign with prima and i want to take these um littler swirls and make some of those for um to put here on the um on the bottom parts um Just happy to see your project. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, needed to as the one you used won't be delivered till mid February. Yes, that's right. When um when needs must, you know. My all time favorite mold. Oh, which one? The 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 little wings or or the baroque swirls. That's going to be gorgeous. Well, I really hope so. My biggest <laughs> fear at the moment is that um like i like the idea i know that the idea itself is gonna look nice but if i'm being completely honest i've been playing it very very safe with colors um for the past i don't know how many um months now i've been playing it very safe on the colors i stay within the neutrals i stay within uh browns and ivories and all of that 
and um, I feel a little bit like nervous about adding color, um, even though it's only just like a light blue um, to my project because I'm like, oh, is it, is it gonna ruin it? So something like this. Now we're gonna make the opposite one. I don't want to add too many, even though like obviously um, you could add more of these um, baroque swirls right and go all the way around the frame I don't want to do that because then it's gonna um, cover up the paper too much and I want the paper to show up I want the paper to still stand out yeah the color is beautiful and I I think that the um, fairy queen the little fairy queen that is inside is also a really good match for um, Christmas snowflakes as well I think it's gonna look really really nice all together so I think in today's live stream we're just going to now finish up applying the molds we'll apply the um, the butterfly wings as well and then I'll have to kind of leave it and let it all dry before I can then move on to the next step because obviously the the wings are gonna have to um, I'm gonna have to glue them down just by the um, like by the bottom parts so they will need to be fully dry before I can move them about or do anything to them otherwise they're gonna end up falling off and I don't want that so I need to be a uh, patient girl <laughs> and let it um, let it all dry and do do what it needs to do need to give it time to do all of that so I'm just applying these molds let's glue them down and the next one so again anybody that is here um just joining us i am creating an inspiration uh, an inspirational project for decoupage queen's january challenge which is um called magical january um you are free to interpret magical january in whichever way you see fit um so fairy tale um something fantasy related um dragons phoenixes fairies um i don't know anything anything that comes to your mind that you're like that that gives you like the magical um feeling you are free to um interpret it in whichever way you see fit do we need to add something little here i feel like we need something i feel like it needs a little something uh let me just have a look at my molds that i have here nearby this finnabar mold I think if we make these little dots here if we just make two of these and then bring this back here so you can see what I mean and then we kind of glue them on just at the top of our swirly molds it kind of gives it a little bit more of a finished look right it gives it a little bit more purpose like they were put there for a reason and they're not just like flowing out it makes them a little bit more um, grounded um, I think that's a good word to describe what I what I mean so we're just gonna add these little elements to it there we go like so makes it a little bit more 
put together. Uh, oh, the Baroque swirls. Yes, it is a it is a really beautiful mold. Catherine is also popping in from work. Hello, Catherine. How are you? I hope that work is um good today. Hope that you are having a good day. Okay, so let's see if we can add the wings. I'm gonna give it a try. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. So I have some heavy body gel here. This is once again Finnabar heavy body gel. And I have this angled because on the back side um, we have clay turning in right towards the back. So if I lay it flat, I'm going to squash that clay. So I have it angled a little bit, um, resting on a jar of gesso because I don't want it to get all completely squashed. Okay, so we're going to see how much heavy body gel we need to apply. So around about like from here to here. I'll just take a palette knife and I'm gonna kind of generously apply this gel it takes a long time to dry and i feel like i say this every single time i use it <laughs> but it is really really good um for sticking things down right it's very good for um sticking things down that can need to be held on um really well so um your hot glue is not going to give you this same kind of result um like super glue again it, if you know me you know i love me a little bit of super glue right or a lot of super glue but because these wings are literally like halfway not hanging on onto anything um we need to really do this properly otherwise the structure is going to fall apart so i position them together to see where i need the wing to go and then once it's kind of on, I'm just going to press it down. To, so that I get all of that excess gel out from underneath. I'll use a brush to pick it up. Makes it a little bit easier. And then... We pick up the excess gel. And on the back, I think there's a lot. Yes, there's quite a bit here. So we can clean away this as much as we can because we're not going to need this gel here. And then again, press it down, make sure it's in place. One wing is on. Again, obviously, ideally, you want to be um, attaching your wings right this way. Um, but because of the way that the door is, if we attach them, if I was to attach them um, next to each other as they should be, um, the little hangy bits are going to be in front of the door and then we won't be able to open our door. Um, so we have to make sacrifices and we have to spread our wings a little bit more. We have to um, angle them. So we're going to again pack on the gel so that when it's dry there's lots for your wing to hold on to. It almost like submerges inside of the gel. The hanging bits! <laughs> Sorry, maybe you've already said, but where can we find information on the January challenge? I'm looking on the Crush Queen website and I'm not seeing anything. Um, right, yes, so the um, January challenge is not going to be on the website just yet. We will hopefully be starting to put things on there soon on the blog. But you can find information about the January challenge in the Decoupage Queens and Kings group. And you can find information 
about the challenge um, also it should be in the description of this live stream um, so you can submit um, your work in decoupage queens and kings group so if you're a member in there um, if you go into the search bar and type in magical january um, it should bring in bring up all of the information about it okay i did not position this all right so let's bring this back oh there we go thank you eileen that's very kind of you to put it in the in the chat thank you so much okay let's remove all of this excess and we can turn this around and again scoop up some of this gel because that's just going to go to waste so we can scoop up some of it here okay so the wings are on now the key now the question is do we put it this way so that it's downwards or do we put it ah oh no my wing quick more gel more gel okay it's because i've been moving it around too much <laughs> like i said yeah i need to like once i've put the key on I need to set this to the side and just let it do its thing until tomorrow and let it fully dry, um, cure, and then it's going to be solid. It's not going to go anywhere. So, what's the name of the butterfly mold? Oh, you know what? I have no idea. Um, Teresa, do you maybe know uh, what the name of this mold is? I know it's a Zuri mold, but I do not know the name. So this way or this way? No, okay, it has to be this way. Why is this wing so crooked? Let's see if we can adjust it a little bit. Do you ever use tight bond, quick and thick? I have no idea what that is, I'm afraid. Let's see if we can scoop up a little bit more of the heavy body gel under here now that I've moved it around a little bit okay and I think I'm gonna go for the key um, like this way right so the um, the big part is gonna be at the top I don't know what do we go do we go this way up or down So the normal way or upside down mm. I think the normal way okay um, butterfly wings from Zuri thank you Eileen you are amazing <laughs> perfect for molds can get on Amazon it's a glue oh no I've never tried that Okay, let's put this on. Pack on some heavy body gel again so you can stick everything in place. And it's on. And I'm going to add a little bit here just on the edge again. Try and catch it like in as many places as I possibly can and then I lay it down and now I just need to leave it alone and let it dry <laughs> and then I think we will also attach that handle at the same time while we're here we may as well because we'll have to paint over it and do all of that so I'll bring this back for a second, put the door on, and then the 
handle is going to have to go somewhere here, right? So we're going to pack it with heavy body gel. Pack it with heavy body gel and then we plop it on and then we scoop up the excess. And the handle is on. Okay, that's our like structure part done. Now we need to, I'm afraid I'm unable to show any more of this because it needs to just um, dry and then we can move on to step two. Right, let me quickly switch my cameras so we can say goodbye. <laughs> and let me plug this, turn this off and hello okay it's me i'm back so um here it is kind of the um progress on the little fairy door so of course we have the wonderful butterfly mold at the top with the key our uh, like decoration to add we have our christmas snowflakes paper beautifully showing off the arch and the door and then when we open the door we have the beautiful um, fairy queen on the inside greeting us ready to guide us into the magical world of um, elves and fairies <laughs> can you tell uh, i i watch um a lot of ben and holly in their magic kingdom uh use the gorilla wood glue oh yes it's like pva um well, thank you. Where did you get the fairy door? I bought this from the works here in UK. I'm sorry, Sarah. I don't know whereabouts you are, but um, it's from the works in UK. Um, <laughs> thank you, Amber. Um, okay, right. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this past hour and um, almost hour and a half. Um, it's been very fun. I really enjoyed having you all here. It's been very, very fun. So I hope that um, I have maybe inspired you to take part in our challenge in um, Magical January Challenge. So if you would like to find out more about the challenge, head over to Decoupage Queens and Kings um, Facebook group or um, you can read it here in the description of this video it should be somewhere here um, and then yes I will oh, I will definitely post the um, the result as soon as it's finished I hope that I'll be able to get it finished um, over the next week um, yeah and make sure that you enter the challenge because again nowadays we do not do any kind of voting system anymore because there's just too many projects and they're all so beautiful and it's just so difficult to decide on um who um has the best project um and so on so that we just decided we're just going to give everybody a number and do a random draw so um when you enter you all have an equal chance of winning. And of course, if you enter the challenge and you win, then you um, win $50 worth of credit to spend in Decoupage Queen store um, on papers. And who doesn't want more papers? And um, you also get a choice of either a Decoupage Queen uh, apron or t-shirt. So if, you, if any of that sounds good to you, make sure that you take part and yeah thank you so much for being here with me this evening thank you susan oh sarah in the us um yeah i don't i'm afraid i wouldn't know where to um find something like that but um i know somebody asked if this is from hobby lobby so might be worth checking out maybe they'll have something like that okay thank you so much everybody and i will see you all soon